it's wonderful to be back together here, um, face to face and having a meeting like this. So it's really awesome to see you all again. Um, so I'd like to open the Thames Community Board meeting on the 20th of May 2020. Um, and uh, so we'll commence with the meeting. Um, are there any apologies? Thank you. Can I please have a yearly departure today? That's fine. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'll move after that. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Cheryl. And Sally. Thanks, Sally. And Peter uh, has put an apology in terms of physical presence, but is here at the meeting uh, by virtual. So welcome, Peter. Thank you, Strat. Yep. Cheers. <laughs> Are there any items not on the agenda? No, oh, I'd like to move that the apologies be received. Thanks. Robin. Thanks, Sally. Robin. Thanks, sir. Any items not on the agenda? Well, that's easy. Any conflicts of interest? Any no conflicts of interest? We'll move on. Minutes for confirmation. Oh, sorry, a um, possible conflict of interest, but just around the letter that came in from um, Tim's man. Right. Because I'm a VP. Sure. Obviously. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing on the agenda regarding that. It'll be more just discussion if, yeah. if anything else. Yeah. That's fine. Um, minutes for confirmation. Oh, Thank you, sir. I'll second. Thanks, Peter. So the first item on the agenda is the Thames Community Board Community Liaison Representative Terms of Reference. Um, so that's on page nine of your agenda. So we'll just move to page nine. And Erin, would you like to speak to this, please? Um, yes, thank you. Through the chair, um, I'll take the report as read this um, as a follow up to a request from the board once you're appointed um, earlier, in the next, earlier in the year, or maybe even last year. Time has kind of blown through. Um, just let you know as well that this terms of reference is based on terms of reference that we already have for Nomata and Tara Palmui community boards, so there is that consistency around um, what we are advising the boards. Thank you, Erin. Yep. So the representation uh, describes activity portfolios uh, of our airfield, our community halls, sports and recreation facilities, parks and reserves, art and creative industries, youth, positive ageing, positive disability, heritage, Tower uh, Cultural Centre Management Committee, business networks, 10 CBD upgrade and promotions, pool, public transport, and libraries. So, it is part of our liaison with these representative groups in our community. Um, and um, we appoint uh, representatives, um, lead coordinators. Uh, we have a um, number one representative for each of those areas of activities of community board, and we have a number two, um, a backup lead coordinator uh, that, that backs up those community organisations and their activities. So just to explain that. Uh, so there is a recommendation there. We can move up. Is there any further discussion regarding those liaison representatives? No further discussion from anybody? Everyone's happy. No mover and second for the res resolution. Cheryl. Thank you. Cherie. Cherie. Thank you, Cheryl. 2.2, uh, the next um, community management uh, agenda item is Tennis Business Association request for funding for automatic number plate recognition camera. And that's on page 14 of your agenda. Erin, if you'd like to speak to that, thank you. It'd be wonderful. 
Uh, yes, so through the Chair, this is our uh, request that it's done through the Teachers Business Association. Um, you'll notice that they haven't specified a specific amount that they're requesting, but we have noted the amount is still available in your discretionary fund. So it just really comes down to the board decision as to whether that's something that you wish to um, contribute to or not. Which is so. Right. So, um, what I will add is we did have a, a, a budget for that, which um, unfortunately didn't get carried forward, is that correct? Um, so through the chair of the, um, it wasn't specific to the APNR um, cameras, but the board did have some funding for um, 10 CBD cameras in this financial year. Um, the advice that I received from GMs and its annual work program is that we're not too keen on doing carry forwards into the next one in two years. So yeah. I've seen that in your work program. Um, but I've also seen that the idea was that that money could be used for the right to park um, revitalisation. So one of the discussion points that we might want to talk about in the work program is around the next financial year, whether you want to utilise some money from the promotion budget. Um, or discretionary funding because at the moment, that's a great idea that I've got no budget <laughs> basically to do anything. But it's really unfortunate that COVID 19 kind of right. came along. Thanks, Sarah, for that explanation. I mean, yeah. the bottom line is that, that funding has gone that we had available for the CTV cameras. Um, so, uh, if we, I mean, if we're going to help this situation, and it's been one of those situations where I think we, we just need to help. Um, but I like the comments of the community board members around this. Uh, where in fact, they would be happy to to um, provide some of that discretionary fund towards supporting, you know, the security cameras in the main street. <laughs> so, yes, so My question is: that enough, or are we just pouring the six thousand six and a half grand into something that still isn't going to be enough, and the operation, you know? It's all very well buying them, but suddenly putting them in goes from 3,000 to 10,000 or something. Mm. Um, and I know we have a spate of people driving through Sterling Sports um, for our daughter to grab their shoes. Um, but it's been pretty quiet since. And so, you know, like I'm a bit bewildered because part of these things that it's yeah. most of money, yeah. and the other part of me thinks people, you know, there's eighteen thousand dollars that communities raised, and so am I, are we just putting big money in, or yeah, so right, the land of the bewildered for me, right, because we seem to be about thirteen thousand dollars short, yeah. and we only had six thousand. Five dollars in our discretionary fund. So. My my thoughts look along the lines of Sally's, and our six thousand wouldn't get them over the line. It would just contribute to them not being, you know, being a bit closer, but not being over the line still. So, so that's really the two. I think it's important to note as well that the actual cost is yet to be finalised. The big green thing is that I think we're going to have to get the code and council staff and he's got a lot to do with the Palmer Tower CCTV system so he's providing their, their advice but you're quite correct around the ongoing costs around maintenance and um, you know the kind of cost so. so time frames around this if this was to be provided by um, you know um, provided in our long-term budget yeah. plan yeah. 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 time frames around getting this done we're, we're they at exactly yeah. 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 with the long-term budget yeah. 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 yeah and we're going to have to get the so I need to receive advice around um, how we're going to pull things to get a full team plan, but we have our own in the process of doing our planning around time frame. So it's certainly something that we could look to as a, as a long term planning speech um, or um, as a community grant, as one of your community grant um, applications for next financial year. There are other, other avenues that's just dependent on the board's feeling around timing and whether they're interested in funding. So now that the community grants application could provide thirty thousand dollars towards something like this, I'm not sure. But yeah. No, but yeah, we're not going to put it on So um, just sort of my thoughts on it. Um, yes, yeah, so I have. Um, uh, I know people in the police, and I think it fits in well with the fact that um, there's one over in Tyra, and if we get one here, then it does. And criminals know about stuff like that. So it's a bit like you, know, you put a burglar alarm on your house, they'll go somewhere else. 
Yep. And I feel that yeah, they, they, they have been working towards this for a while. They've fundraised what might be um, over half of it. Um, we do need to get a more definite amount for how much it is going to be. Um, but yeah, I, I would support a, a contribution of some sort towards it. Um, I think it's, yeah, you're, you're right, it was for a while there was, um, seemed like there was a ram raid every every few weeks and some places got targeted several times. Um, yes, it might have quietened down now, but it's not going to, I think it's not going to stay quiet. And if the criminals know that if they drive into Thames, their license plate number is going to be seen. Well, so it's just a good deterrent. They might then go to Pyro and do it again. <laughs> So you're supporting or providing certain things for Yeah, but I, I would like to see yeah, I would like to see something a little bit more concrete as far as that thirty thousand. I mean that sounds like a from what I've people I've talked to that sounds like a reasonably good sort of an estimate of its cost. But yeah, like I would want to see it go to thirty five or forty or forty five. Um, you know, and then people would say to us, Well, why are you contributing money when you didn't know how much it because yeah. mm -hmm. so. there is no quote, there is no sort of business case, you know, like. I'll get to you in a minute, Peter. I'm oh, sorry, yes, yeah. Yeah. Cheryl's trying to talk. Yep, uh, Cheryl said, yep. Oh, it's just, it's just a question, and that was what can this provide as opposed to CCTV cameras, but I guess it's more instant. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think they can load, they right. can load stolen uh, right. license plate numbers into that yeah. machine. By the internet, yeah, and it's said, oh, that one's just driven over the car. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Thank you. So, how does anyone sit with the idea of providing $6,500 dollars with knowing that there's going to be about $7,000 shortfall based on just the estimates? Um, is it okay? I mean, just following up what Sally said, is, is it okay to provide part of that at this stage um, as the catalyst to? Know, them trying to fill the gap, um, or how is that gap going to be filled? Is it is the expectation that that gap get filled by totally by uh, a council grant or, or tenants community board grant? Um, so they're the sort of questions you need to ask. Whether in fact these six and a half to six and a half thousand dollars would go a long way towards helping their situation, which I believe is really important or town situation. Uh, Peter, have you got any comments you'd like to add to this? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. If I may. Um, so first of all, just a general statement. I'm just um, a, to a total supporter of the Thames Business Association, so I need to declare that. However, um, I, I'm, cons I'm, I'm concerned. There's a, a few things here. First of all, um, I, I, I would want to know. It's almost like I think they're, they're coming to us a bit too early for um, for the, the funds. It's kind of like if they were coming to us and say, hey, look, we're now only $3,000 short or something or other, that would be it. And I think that's the general tone of what I'm hearing around the table, that let's we need to know what is the final cost and therefore, you know, are we completely making up that cost or not? So I think I'll just reinforce that. The second thing is I want, I'm curious as to why Andrew advised them to apply to the community board for funds, was was he? Do we do, do we understand why he um, recommended that? Erin, have you got a, a view uh, on that? So it's very good here. Andrew didn't directly recommend that they do. We never recommend to anyone that they can do it as a community board. But the situation was that council had funding in this financial year for some CCTV. Um, but we wouldn't normally just give that, you know, what obviously council funding out to a group anyway it has to go through the, you know, correct channels around discretionary or grant funding. So because they were after some funding, the only avenue currently available to them is to apply for discretionary funding. So just like any other organisation, we would say to them, if you want to, you are welcome to apply to the board for discretionary funding. And that's at the board's discretion as to whether you grant it. So, it wasn't like a recommendation <laughs> per se, but it's, it's something that we would notify any community board group that came to us with an idea that they really were passionate about. So, um, yeah. Okay, thanks for that. 
Um, the, the third thing is I we have got a um, special meeting coming up in a few weeks' time, and I wouldn't want a decision that we make today in any way to cloud the clarity that we're going to need to have for the discussion around the Thames Business Association submission in a couple of weeks' time. And I kind of think if we if we agree to this and we have some uncertainty about the quantum of this, it could actually uh, just muddy the waters a little bit for, for the clarity we're going to need in a few weeks' time. Uh, and my fourth comment was I was surprised to see this on the agenda. I would have thought that either you, Strat, or I might have had got a signal from TBA that they were actually going to be applying for this, and, and it, it wasn't until it came through in the agenda that I was aware they were doing that, and I just thought, oh, there's a little bit of a disconnect there, which, you know, I kind of think if we were, if had been approached, we might have been, you know, ahead of this meeting, been exploring other options or understand, trying to understand what the total was going to be, et cetera, et cetera. So is, it way, so is the way forward to defer this mm. and have it as part of the ongoing discussions about our relationship, future funding and all of that? Is that one way where we, because, uh, yeah, I'm just wondering, yeah, it doesn't make sense to approve this when we're in the middle of trying to sort out what is our relationship going to be? Who's going to pay for what? How much is going to be ratepayer funded? How much is going to be business funded? Mm -hmm. Like it feels like that's a, this is a tiny part of quite a big discussion. Yes. To get discussion for the town. And I did, yeah, and, and I don't think us deferring this now is going to kill the project. No, I agree. So, no. Yeah. And people like the Lyme Foundation and stuff, you know, we. Um, they've got 10,000 from them. Often people will hold grants if there's a good reason. Oh, yeah, there'll be lots of organisations. There'll be a lot of COVID. Said, oh, God, we were nearly ready in yeah. the virus. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a project that's halfway there, or a little bit over halfway there. We all agree that it's a project that is vital for our town security. Um, so there is a suggested resolution. What I might recommend is that we receive see the report as per part one of the resolution and that we defer part two, defer defer the item until there's some more finality about um, uh, the, the folks in the situation. Would that sound right? Um, yeah. just defer the item until there's more finality about um, this situation in terms of funding, and uh, and we may consider it in our next long term plan. Is that sit okay with mm -hmm. the yeah. yeah, something on those lines. Yeah. yeah. Peter, is that okay? Yeah, that, yeah, that works for me straight. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so we move and second that. Oh my God. Yeah. And I'll second it. Thanks, Peter. So we're clear on that around in terms of a resolution? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. That's good. 2.3, public transport in Thames. That's on page 16 of your agenda. Love it. Yeah. 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 So it speaks for itself to some extent. Does it? Yeah. Everybody? I think it does. Yeah. So the resolution is receives the public transport in Thames report, supports the Thames connect the bus moving from a trial basis for permanent service yeah. and approves the inclusion of funding for the Thames connect the bus in the 2021-31 long term plan. Yeah. Yeah. There is an opportunity to do that now. Is everyone in agreement with that? Yeah. 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 Can I just clarify? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so, um, the, like, so you've got the regional council and then you've got NZTA, so, and, and then you've got us. So, between all three of us, we pay for it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Chris? 
just for it. So through the chair, I just wonder if we should tweak that resolution because the community board can't approve the funding in the long term plan. So whether it should be recommended to council and close the funding for the long term plan. Yeah. 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 Comment, yeah. Yeah. Can I make a comment as well? Um, it noted in the report that Coromandel was talking about our route from yes, there right. to here, and our area goes to Wilson's Bay in uni, not quite pink. So, just we might have to be flexible when it comes to if, if whatever happens to Coromandel tents affects uh, our residents up the coast, well, then we might have to come to the party. With helping the Coromandel one. So that's just a thing for the future for people to know that there is an aim of trying to increase the mm. transport. Mm. The mm. Street. So are they having their own one? It's, it's the one connected bus that's going to spend time going up to Coromandel? Oh, that all hasn't been worked oh, yeah. out, but certainly it would be as linked in as much as possible. Yep. But times and things, it's a long way from here to Coromandel and to get people down and back in one day yeah. was, yeah. So we want to be selfish about maintaining what we've got in terms and not giving anything away, yes. but increasing it as well. Yes. Yes. Katrina Chair, I can advise that WRC has come up with a number of options. So um, um, Coromandel Cobb will be giving a chat about um, those different options and, provide, and, and once, once I'm aware of what those are, I'm happy to alongside growth in the little workshop with the team's community board as well. I think it's really important that you <coughs> understand what their thinking is and, and obviously to just take those connections as yeah. well around um, those things. So I do know that um, WRC is having some discussions at the moment um, on the same thing as well. So, so wait for that options report and, and then trying to actually connect to Coromandel. Um, and uh, Peter, I know this has been a, a subject of your interest. Do you any comments you want to make about it? Uh, no, I think Sally captured all this, uh, all, this, all the um, relevant. Yeah. Right. Uh, so everybody so else happy except for that change in the resolution. So just to <coughs> come along here and say, to chair, um, that report is going to the Coromandel Community Board at the next meeting regarding the options and what you're trying to do that extension. We may have some public transport connection from Coromandel through the teams. So, uh, so Aaron's right. The regional council have worked up a few options. They're going to the Coromandel. Community board, right, and when we come to LinkedIn, Thanks, Bruce, yeah. that might be one way that we could use um, Zoom or Team um, to actually, as community boards, mm -hmm. even LinkedIn, so we're talking to each other, so that it's joined up right from the start. Yeah, I think that's I think that's really important that we don't end up we're on the same page. And all those yeah. Other yeah, yeah, yeah. And nice. Teams, one way of doing that. Sure. All right. Um, so, so apart from point three, where it says approve the inclusion, we recommend the inclusion of funding for the tents next to bus. Are the movers and seconders happy with that change in the yeah. resolution? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it's up on the screen too. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, all right. So, moving on to the next items on the agenda, which are the community facilities. Oh, yeah, just do it. Where would you like to go? Maybe you're a little bit. I want to win. Oh, yes, can we pass the motion, please, Greg? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so who was the saying it wasn't? Are you okay? No, no, no. no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we voted. We said, in Robin and Peter. Yeah, Robin and Peter. All in favour. That's all 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 in favour. I. <laughs> <laughs> Three point one tanks commercial operators licenses mm -hmm. on or over public places. Council reserves. First of July two thousand twenty to the thirtieth of June two thousand twenty-two. That's a two-year period. Um, Derek, would you like to speak to this? 
Um, thank you, Board the Chair. Um, good morning, Board. Um, so for those that are familiar with this process, um, we advertise for commercial operators to come forward and then people like uh, coffee carts, etc. And uh, we ask for expressions of interest and we vet them. Um, and then we issue a license. And at this stage, it's for two years. Normally we issue for three years. Um, the reason why we're doing it for two years in this instance is that we're running the reserve management plan process around the district and we're trying to be consistent with that. So even though Tim says it's own reserve management plans, um, the East Coast still doesn't have these. So um, ideally, uh, it would be for a longer term, um, but um, in this instance, it's for two years now. Um, we have advertised, but we also will take what are termed as late entries as well. So if any other people come forward and ask um, if they can um, you know, run a coffee cart in a particular reserve, then we'll seek um, further information from them and run a process whereby we'll come back to the board and ask for their approval as well. So this isn't necessarily at, um, the entirety. Uh, we would expect more people to come forward throughout the two, the two years and run that by board as well. Okay. So, do you want me to go through them on an individual basis, or are you happy to? No, I'm happy to take that as being read. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, there's a recommendation there. Um, yeah, we have to put something down, and whether that's so, uh, we think that's the correct one. The board has the right, obviously, to overturn that if they deem it um, necessary. Um, so the first one, um, obviously Michael Al, that's going back to Nati Tama um, We've spoken to uh, Tama Tara about that and they weren't happy. They would like some form of operation there, but um, they're not comfortable with this operation. Okay, so that's our recommendation there. Okay, so, sorry, yeah, straight. Uh, so my, my question was going to be, why could the uh, license not be granted and the license terminate at the point that this is handed over. But you're saying now you've already had a consulted uh, Nati Tamatera and they, on, on land that they are going to be owning, they do not want to have this operator working. Is that right? Um, at this stage, they don't want any operators working there. They've had people in the past and have been unhappy with the way that they've operated, and I think that's left some form of, I don't know, um, they felt that the way that the operators were operating was a disrespectful way, so they're not keen on anything going in there at this stage. Yeah, I can see that. I understand that. Thank you. Okay. It strikes me that it all makes sense and on a nice balance how you've done in, um, by protecting businesses up the coast where it's really close to be able to get a coffee and buy an ice cream. You know, I think that the women down in the, uh, what I call the Plunkett car park uh, are doing pretty well in providing a service up Queen Street. So it seems that your recommendations to me made sense and um, and to, it just strikes me that to have the potential of a car on every one of those reserves up the coast isn't the coast to me. Mm -hmm. um, and people have gone at Wyoming Tapu, you know, so mm -hmm. I think there's enough enough up there. Yeah. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. So based on the explanation of uh, that you've just given us, I, I'm I'd be happy to approve these all the recommendations that you've outlined to us because I think they all make sense. I like the idea of protecting business, particularly in the post-COVID thing. The last last thing these establishments establishments need at this point is any sort of headwind, and I think it's it's really um, sensitive of the board to be saying let's help them find their feet. Um, and also the fact that you have consulted already with um, with other stakeholders. I think it's really good. So I'm I'm behind the uh, the recommendations made in this report. Excellent, thanks, Peter. I think thank you, everyone. Is um, thank you, Trudy Chair. Just one other point, um, Peter has raised is this was prepared um, sort of before the full outcome of the COVID situation was known. So. Yes, um, so and that's why I come back to I expect 
the, the, to be future applications or already receiving it, uh, expressions of interest in what people say. But people are obviously seeing there's a need to actually diversify their businesses and stretch out, so expect more in the future. Well, well certainly some of the reasons for not approving some of the applications versus approving the applications are clear. Uh, and so, if I move for a second, that's all. Three. Recommendations? Yep. Second, Martin? Yep, I'm happy to second that. Right, all those in favour? Aye. Thank you, board. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Yep. Good report there. Yes. A lot of work went into that. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. The sport white camera man coming for this, was he? With a note up on there saying that Bill was in the foyer. Yeah. Yeah. I believe he so, is. Okay. We're doing it a, a tag team. Yeah. <laughs> it's Derek and Bill. Reach your hand out. Why not? So, through to page 66 of your agenda. Bill. No, it's No, it's not. Moving on. So this is a big report, Thames Coromandel District Council Sport and Active Recreation Plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. report to read to <laughs> one of your special interests here to, to read. Oh, okay. yeah. um, he's, he's, he's online. So he's online. available to check that directly. Yes. Um, so um, thank you, board. Um, yes, as you can appreciate it, it's a huge, uh, huge plan. Um, I'm joined with me uh, as Bill online somewhere. Um, so he's the uh, well known, he's the Thames Coromandel District Coordinator employed by Sport Waikato. Um, and Sport Waikato developed this plan on our behalf. Um, so this um, sits below the Sport Waikato Regional Facilities Plan, which looks at the entirety of provision throughout the entire region. Um, and it sits alongside other plans that other territorial authorities have prepared. So, for instance, Hauraki District has one that has been, has been in existence for a couple of years now. So, this is the first time that we've done this. Um, it, 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 it looks holistically at the whole district, not just at um, clubs that we connect with, it looks at clubs that we actually don't really have a connection with. Um, and uh, it tells us what people are actually doing and how they're doing it how active they actually are, what ages they are, and what are the most uh, popular activities. And for instance, what aren't they doing, which is pretty key as well. Um, it, it, it also um, it, it's very well compiled. We've got a very guy, a good hit rate. We've got around about um, in, well in the, in the 70s in terms of responses from clubs, which is quite high compared to other uh, sport plans. Um, and a good thing about this plan, uh, if you're looking from, um, say, a, a Crotac club or whatever, why should they be involved? It's essentially a really good mechanism because it gives an opportunity to touch out to other organisations, other sports clubs, etc. And everybody's got declining membership, declining funding regimes, so I guess they're an opportunity to hub. Um, it also gives them a mechanism whereby they can actually um, if they're part of this plan, they can reach out to other funders, not necessarily having council on the shoulder all the time for funds, but they can actually use this plan and go cap it down to New Zealand Charities Commission or whatever um, and seek funding in that way. So it's not necessarily just um, you're in this plan by default, you can go to council. That's not the intention. If they wanted to come to council or they had an idea, and there is a mechanism in this plan whereby it's better. And you'll note in here, particularly in the later parts of the plan, there's a lot of actions there from Sport Waikato, not necessarily Council itself. So it is a really good partnership plan. Um, it is a draft, there are some amendments to be made. Um, um, but if there's anything else on this bill, would you like to chime in now if you're online? Welcome, welcome, Bill. Who's there, hopefully? Yes, thank you very much. Um, through the chair, thanks, Derek, for the opportunity. Um, pretty good summary, I think, with regards to the process. It was it was very robust. Um, we carried out a survey, and as Derek mentioned, we had a 76% hit rate. 
Uh, not everyone did respond, um, but that's not to say that uh, clubs and organisations that didn't respond will not be uh, supported or um, listened to in, in the future and in the very near future. So they can be included in the plan. Um, it is still this draft, final draft type of uh, situation at the moment. So... Um, what it does is it, it clearly identified the needs that that we have throughout the districts as opposed to wants through through that robust process of survey, community consultation, online consultation, and then through a waiting process um, in conjunction with council staff as well. So um, it just, I guess, it it. Um, assist with any decision making processes down the down the track it's not to say that everything in the plan needs to happen um, but it certainly will help council and community boards make those decisions in a more informed um, process i suppose no that's excellent bill it seems to be a very holistic approach sort of the district approach as you say you know just target its wants rather than um, or needs rather than wants, I should say, uh, and and it has that synergy relating to getting the best support externally, you know, with the partnership that you have with Sports Bike Better. So, uh, in terms of external funds or or assets that you wish to, you know, remove or replace or, or create. So it seems like a very good good report. Thanks. Um, I will, if I may, add one other point, uh, particularly about the replacement of the tennis pool, just like it gives um, other clubs or opportunities for uh, for funding from external parties, then having this uh, solidifies our opportunities to, to seek funding from elsewhere as well. Right. I want to talk to Chair. Yes, I just um, sure. think this would be um, an amazing um, document or, you know, um, what would you call it? Report? Report um, to feed into the positive ageing youth and disability strategies that the Council has as well. Um, because those three are there and everybody knows that exercise movement is one of the best ways of countering you know, ageing and, and disability and all of those things. So I'd like to sort of see how we can use this report to feed into those. Uh, my comment actually follows on quite closely from that amazing Cheryl, because it said in that, there that there was a trend away from organised sport, and, and we've been aware of this creative vibe idea of revitalising Thames, and I wondered if some of the ideas that were in there would fit nicely into what we want to do. And, and I also noticed that 64% of adults want to do more, and so I wondered if it was just a good opportunity to, to include um, play and include equipment into the, the spaces that we are looking to revitalise. So, yeah, I, was, I was excited about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Bill, I'm not sure if you have a comment to make about that in terms of the action plan, where in fact some of the key coordinators can be groups like disability groups or, um, you know, sort of getting their feedback in relationship to, you know, that plan. Age concern. Age concern. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, there is in the back of the 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 plan report itself. There's yeah. actually a table of who did respond, and um, age concern. We're one of the ones that did respond. So uh, if they're not listed either, then it doesn't mean to say, as I, as I mentioned before, that um, that they won't be. You know, that, that they'll be excluded. So it also gives Sport Waikato, and particularly in my role, a, a real focus as well around um, supporting and offering some, um, I suppose, relationships and being able to uh, direct and advise a lot of organisations on how they be can become uh, more capable in, in building their, uh, in developing their capability and so that they can remain sustainable. So the, the plan itself actually really does uh, have a, a broad reaching um, scope. It certainly does. It's, yep. I'd like to see a plan like this that really connects well. 
Peter, did you want to, any comments? Are you okay I, there? Just two. The first one is I'd, I'd really like to hear Cherie's view on the report. I think. But, <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, and the second one, and, and I don't know, you can tackle them either order, but um, d d has Doc had any engagement with this or, because it just seems to be the whole thing around keeping people active and so on, that Doc, Doc's role in our, our, in our part of the world is really important because of all the, uh, you know, the tracks and all that sort of stuff. Are they, do they have any input or is there any presentation with them at all? But those two are the questions. One's three, one's my comment about Doc. Um, so I did read the report and I was, uh, to be honest with you, I was sort of uh, a little bit astounded by the fact that our usual recreative um, sports, i.e. netball and rugby, that were falling, the percentage of that was shown to be falling. Um, but also, um, I'm pretty excited to think that hubbing is a way to go. I've been talking about this for a little while now, about how um, I think that all our sports um, codes, clubs, etc., could do really well if we were all in one space. Um, I've mentioned around, there was a place um, that I've been to which was called a sports and recreation place in Takamon. And every club went into that, that hub. Um, the, the feeling of um, cooperation by all those clubs, everybody in there together. Uh, I just, yeah, I feel that teams could do it. I think we could do it really well. Um, and of course, my next thing is, is that I continue to talk about our new sports facility, but I'd really love to see shovels on the ground. I'd love to see things start to happen. You know, it's talk to talk. You have to go to happen. It's from me. So would I. <laughs> you know, I just talk about that, um, you know, our, we're now not going to do anything with the grandstand. So, you know, we're not, what has happened with the money? Have we deferred the money? Have we stopped the money or something? Should we be using yeah, something like that? We couldn't talk about that because there is a direct plan around that. And, and the simple answer is that we don't want to spend a lot of money where it is actually in floodplain. And yeah, so, so that's the plan. We're looking at going to our new space. Which we are, yeah. yeah. Thanks, that's all I've got to say. Thank you, Mark. Good, good comments, thanks, Sheree. Yeah. And there are challenges in front of us in terms yeah. of just how we um, move away from a flood hazard zone, um, at, which has been problematic for years, as long as I've been on council. Well, yeah. And um, Mode somewhere that might work for our town. And of course, that's the difficulty in terms of our land areas and spaces. We have the area available. And it's good that that area available, that it all works for plan, is available for, uh, I say you, because you've got to have a point where they can access an area easily without, you know, they haven't got cars and all that sort of thing, so they can mm -hmm. walk, all that sort of thing. So it's so important that the area that we use has that good access uh, for them, you know, for the young people of that town. So uh, it's, yeah, I mean, I take on board what you're saying. And I think there are plans that we're working through in relationship to that in terms of, but it would be nice to see something on the ground happen. Just something that started. Yeah. Um, so just in relation to Peter's question about Doc, yeah. is, is Bill, was Bill going to comment yeah, Bill, on that? Bill's going to comment on that. I, I presume they're one of the um, the lead coordinators into the into the action plan. Yeah, thank you. Through the chair, uh, great question, Peter. Um, now, initially, all of the clubs and organisations, which included your recreation organisations, walking groups, that sort of thing as well, were were engaged with. So the 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 plan will give us a starting point. Um, with regards to uh, what their needs were. Now, if this then broadened out into we needed to start discussions with DOC, then um, in terms of access um, and any, oh, I suppose, um, restrictions that may currently be in place with regards to some of those tracks and that then then this this plan having this plan in place will will allow us to to. To, to open those discussions up up further. So they weren't consulted with regards to the development of this plan, 
but it does this plan does give us that opportunity to then start those discussions if that's been identified that that's where we should go. Thank you. Thanks. We're up with that. Yeah. I'm sorry, Derek, at the risk of sounding like a pedant, can you please correct the spelling of your part on page four? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of unfortunate errors, but thank you. Thank you. It's been noted. I don't think you're pedantic, Robin. Oh, thanks, Peter. <laughs> My only comment on the board is just around that executive summary around the partnership, partnerships. It's very encouraging to uh, see the mention of the opportunities of partnering with schools, secondary schools, um, primary schools, etc. Because um, yeah, just the idea that well, we don't want to have to have a whole heap of different facilities that are being used 20-30% of the time in the rec centre at the high schools, a perfect example of that, that gets used, what, 60-70%? Um, so yeah, I'm really happy about the fact that schools are uh, mentioned in there. So from here, if, if Council um, supports our recommendation, um, then then as an active, you know, a good active plan for the area, um, so, oh well, let's just hope that you know it, it can really be something that, that brings home some real great stuff for our, for our, our area in this, this capacity. So we have a suggested resolution. Uh, one is received the terms Coromandel District Council Sports and Active Recreation Plan Report, dated 4th of May 2020. And two requested council adopts the Thames Coromandel District Council Sport and Active Recreation Plan. Uh, are we a mover and seconder for that? I'll make that. I'll make that. Right. Cheryl's mover and Cherie has seconded. Thank you, both of you. Um, all in favour of that? Aye. 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 Uh, Derek, thank you. Thank you, Gord. Involvement in this report. Bill, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Thanks for watching. So we yeah. look forward to some good things happening with it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is that all good? Yeah. All right. Um, Corporate services, Veolia Water Services. So I believe we've got John Mustin. John, are you there? Yes, good morning. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, John. Good morning, nice to meet John. John. Welcome. Uh, we're at page 195 of the agenda, everyone. <laughs> oh, good. Mr. Chairman, this is a fairly straight, straightforward um, report. So the auditor are currently a C. Um, they've advised they wish to exercise their renewal for another five years. Um, they've been a good tenant. There's, there's no reason why we would not support this. Sure. Yep. So there's a recommendation there. I'll move. I'll second. A suggested resolution, so it's been moved. Sally, seconded. Robin. Robin, is there any further discussion? Uh, yeah, can I just a uh, couple of questions? Why why are you suggesting there should no, be no rent review? No, the, the, there is to be a rent review. It's just during this COVID period, the value has been unable to do an assessment. So at the moment, the lease provides for the current rental of 30795 to continue to apply until such time as we have the new assessment. And then that will be effective from the 1st of April. Well, is everybody clear on that? So if the value goes up, the lease will go up. If the value's gone down, um, the lease will be less. So um, <laughs> could go either way. That's how I read it. Yeah, the, the lease provides that the rent shall not be less than the current rent. So. Right. Cool. Right. And, and 
and then at the appraisal, it'll be backdated to the 1st of April. Is that what? Correct. Is that, okay, okay, I get it. Thank you. There's a backdated uh, rent increase or potentially a rent, backdated rent increase, depending on what you're Yeah, retrospective. Yeah, retrospective. Cool. I'm happy with that. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Adam Irwin, is all those in favour? Aye. Thank you, John. You're welcome, Mr Chairman. Oh. I'll see you again shortly. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, page 109 now, where are we? Policy and planning. Draft Thames Coromandel District Council open space and community facility strategy. Page 199. So I believe we have Liz Lee. Liz Lee, are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Liz Lee. How are you? Well, thank you. Right. Did you want to speak to this report? Thanks. Uh, uh, just briefly, um, I will take it that it uh, it's quite a long strategy and report, so I take it everyone will have read it. Um, basically, this uh, strategy is a it's a draft strategy. Uh, it's it's trying to set a platform for uh, good management or better management of councils, open spaces, and community facilities. So it's covering both our reserves, our open spaces. Um, and our halls, public conveniences. So it's quite a it's quite a large, a broad range of things we're looking at. Uh, so um, what what we've done in this strategy is try to answer the question of whether we have enough enough open space to carry us through for the future, given given the uh, projected growth and the type of you know the type of uh, communities that we have. And so uh, the, the broad assessment is that we have enough. We might have shortages in some types of uh, open space, but it's we have compensation comp compensatory spaces that we can um, we can utilize. Um, but what some of the challenges that uh, the uh, that the strategy uh, work has identified is that we've got um, and, and this won't be news to many of you. Uh, we have got challenges around the viability of some of our open spaces and community facilities, um, the age and condition of some of them, um, changing community needs and how we um, how we make these buildings and these open spaces fit for purpose for an aging population. Um, and, 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 and there's some questions around how we cope with our peak demand, our seasonal peak demand, and the affordability of some of the repurposing that needs that will need to go on with some of our aging open spaces and, and community facilities. So this just sets out a, uh, a platform for better management and for us to actually uh, really engage in thinking about, about uh, using, using our spaces and our buildings better over time. It also sets out some criteria if, for example, we, uh, you know, it was decided that a piece of land was surplus to requirements. It sets out criteria that, that are district wide. Uh, it's an even playing, it sets an even playing field for, um, for making decisions around disposal and acquisition of new, new open space and community facilities. And um, I'm just looking, it's a draft, we're looking for feedback. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, Leslie, just in terms of how well Thames is served in this in this area, yes, uh, are, are some of the major open space or facilities in Thames? Uh, have you at this stage identified some of the, the challenges in front of us in terms of maintaining some of our major spaces, well used spaces? Um, yes. And a, a, lot, a lot of that is going to come through your reserve management plans. This is sort of an umbrella strategy that sits above the reserve management plans. And I think the reserve management plans actually will speak to particular places and, and spaces. And, and, and also this, this uh, document sets up uh, a rationale for uh, improved management of your community buildings as well. You don't have man reserve management. You don't, you know, you, 
you don't have currently management plans for your building. So this is saying, this is indicating that you really need a more robust system for managing our buildings, our public conveniences, knowing where they are, knowing what condition they're in, having a proper renewal cycle for them. Uh, for Thames especially, uh, we found some shortages in some of your, uh, in some of the types of uh, open spaces, for example, your neighborhood reserves, but those are compensated for by quite a lot of ecological linkages that can be used for um, walking and exercise. And I, I think uh, the, the Waikato sports plan, that draft plan actually sets out the numbers of the types of uses that you know are likely to be uh, to, to come into vogue more as as our population changes. Uh, you have got uh, you've got Rhodes Park, which needs quite a lot of work. You you know that, um, and has got issues associated with it. Um, one of the challenges that the strategy does highlight is uh, the natural, the challenge of uh, the risk of natural hazard from too many of our open spaces and our community facilities, and it's uh, you know uh, flooding. Yeah. Also, all sorts of risk associated with natural hazard. Right. Thanks, Leslie. Any comments from many board members? Yes, I just had a comment on the um, on the first page of the report. It talks about um, staff seeking feedback from community boards. Yes. Uh, and reporting back to council on 12th of May. So. Uh, it's it's it won't be going to the 12th of May. That meeting was cancelled, so I apologise. Uh, the uh, report was written. Sorry, Martin, I couldn't see uh, you. Sorry, so, so that will just be at the next council meeting. 23rd of June. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I, I had a, a question too, Leslie. Um, on page 11 of your report, you talk about neighbourhood reserves. And you have a guideline about um, recommending urban residential areas be within a 10 minute walking distance or 500 metres of a neighbourhood park or reserve. Yes. And then on the following page, you talk about the average for Thames Ward being 1.9 hectares per thousand residents. I, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how that fits in with the, the sentence in the paragraph before where it's recommended that we're all living within 500 metre radius. So are you able at some point to put a percentage in that, say, well, yes, 95% of us do live within the reserve, or just because the two sentences, while they both give you really valuable information, don't connect in my brain in terms of what one means to the other. Yes, and apologies for that. I, I had hoped to do a little presentation, but uh, COVID interfered. Uh, uh, so yeah, so what we uh, what we have done, actually, we uh, using our GIS, we have uh, looked at neighborhood parks and you're able to draw a 10 meter uh, walking distance circle around them. Ah, so yeah. we've done that for most of our areas. Those guidelines that I've alluded to in the strategy are actually from the New Zealand Recreation Association. So they have a number of kind of uh, uh, sort of criteria to, uh, to give us some idea about whether we have sufficient uh, amount, but also the the, uh, the amount of land that we have is available for, for our communities. So they talk about, and most uh, urban designers will talk about a 10 minute walking distance from an open space. So generally in Thames, there is that. Um, so we, some of our, your, our neighborhood reserves are, are greater than 10 minute walking distance. But as I've said at the beginning, um, it's co we compensate for that by the quite a large number of ecological and, and linkage parks, such as the, the ones that we have along the along the, the river and the um, along the coastline. Okay. So th there's a bit of compensating, and then the and then you then the uh, there is this other criteria that the Recreation Association suggests, which is just a, a broad one. You know, how many hectares of parks do you have per thousand population? So they're sort of different. They're different criteria, but just help us to arrive at some understanding of how much we have. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, well, in the second part of the resolution, you uh, you're asking for comment from the Tennis Community Board. Yes. Regards open space and community facilities. Does anyone have anything to add in relationship to that? Um, I might add that, you know, 
there was a previous item we just discussed in terms of our, our sport and active recreation plan. And I made a comment about roads, park, if it were moved, uh, the importance of, of easy access, accessibility, and, and um, ensuring that, for example, the youth of our town, the young people of our town, that haven't got cars and stuff like that can easily access these facilities, like walk or cycle to these facilities safely and easily. <laughs> so um, that that was a comment that I had in relationship to considerations of open space um, that I thought might be relevant. <laughs> um, yes. And somebody, other people might have those type of comments as well. Um, Thank you, Mr Chair, again, it's um, links in with the positive ageing strategy and um, disability strategy, so all these plans are actually supporting those strategies of council. Through this year, and just to advise that what we've suggested to the other community boards as well is just due to time frames, it's about to to email them directly with any comments that actually can consider those for inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, we're proud of going to council. So, um, yeah, so um, that's just an option that, that um, we suggest just, um, it's just unfortunate due to meeting cancellation, but at the time, the frames of the question. So, um, yes. if you want to do that, obviously, yes. then um, send you the email address. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I can. Uh, sorry, Leah. Yeah. No, apologies. Um, I, I can post my email address and my for everyone, yes. if There's that's a bit, helpful. Peter, Peter Rebel online, on virtual like you, and I'll ask Peter if he's got any comments. Um, thanks, Peter. Yeah, no, look, I'm all good. Um, all good? Yeah, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a document. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see you munching those Easter eggs either. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, that's all good. Um, so, has the community board got any more comments to make regarding this at this point? We have the opportunity to give um, Leslie some feedback, as Erin has said. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Um, so, we have a suggested resolution. Do I move and second that for that resolution? Thanks, Martin. And a second, Rob? Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. All right. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. All right. Moving to the next item, which is our shoreline management plans projects update on page 234. Looking through to that. Uh, a very important piece of work for Thames. Um, Eamon, thank you, welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you here. Yeah, nice, nice yeah, to see you. That's a bit unusual for us all, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, in real, in real life. Yeah. <laughs> seeing, yeah, seeing some lovely smiles around the table, which is really awesome. Um, so, if you'd like to speak to this report, which is the Shoreline Management Plan Project update. Yep, yep. Um, so, it's a significant project that goes across the, the whole coast. It's um, a three year project. You've probably uh, aware of the size and the scale of it. Um, it's looking to manage um, the hazards and the effects of hazards and the, and the people that are exposed to hazards in the district, um, both short and long term. So I'm looking at past uh, hundred, hundred years as well as dealing with today's issues. Um, where we're at at the moment is one year through the three year project. Um, so we've been focusing a lot on technical work um, some of that technical work is about to come to light, um, but also important is the community engagement, buy-in and understanding. Um, so the idea is that 
these community panels or coastal panels help us achieve that. Um, there's four um, coastal panels proposed for the district, Thames and the Thames Coast, um, Coromandel, basically around Community Bay, Mercury Bay and uh, the South East Coast. Um, so we're looking for nominations too from each uh, community board to be um, representing um, on those panels. Um, the panels will be made up of citizens, um, iwi representatives or mana whenua. Um, we're looking for uh, business owners or business uh, people to represent business interests. So looking for quite a diverse um, makeup on the panel. Um, all going well, we will take um, receiving the nominations over the next month and take a report back to council, I think on the 23rd of June for adoption of the final panel maker. Um, and then the, the panels probably start the, the month after. Um, so we, we're one year into a three year project. So we, the panels could run for another two years, um, probably meeting about every uh, two months. Um, I hope that's enough, but any questions? My question is, yes, um, are you doing them all at the same time? Or are we the first, because, yeah, I can't believe that you can do four panels and do them, yeah. Um, so the, the way we're going to do it is, is staggered, I suppose. Um, so whether that's uh, staggered by a month or two months, that's the kind of staggering we want to do. Um, so it's not a do tens and then six months later go and look at somewhere else. It's it's, it's not exactly at the same time, um, but as close as we can practically amass. So we have a tens for the staggering. Um, ideally first. Yeah. Um, um, tens we want to get mm -hmm. up and run, running as soon as we can. Um, there's there is good. Um, engagement, I'd say, responsiveness from me at the moment, but they're also raising questions um, that we still need to work them through. So there's um, um, a, a little bit of uncertainty about resolving those and, and how we, the speed at which we can progress, um, but that's a, work, that's a work in progress. Can I say three things and then I'll shut up? Oh, <laughs> 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 the first thing is that to me, and I heard it through, I hear in the community and I hear it through the submission process, we have overseas consultants, um, They, if they don't link in, and I'm not saying they don't, at our peril, I think Hawke's Bay was seen as the masterclass from what I see, they're starting to have trouble now because they didn't put the horny issues of who's going to pay and what does this mean and etc. early enough. So I think that's really important that we don't terrify people, but let's get real. And if ever I dip into this stuff, I'm forever reading that the sea level rise isn't as sexy as the um, coastal erosion, but it's actually much more important, is going to happen more, and at our peril do we not deal with sea level rise and just keep fluffing around coastal erosion, protecting a few people or a few roads. So that's my little sermon, and then I'll shut up. Yeah. I feel very passionate about that. was all three. <laughs> so, well, so I'd like to endorse that in terms of Thames Coast and Thames being a priority area because of several factors that are at play uh, for our area, several strong strong factors which include sea level rise, inundation, um, ground, groundwater um, rise, you know, all those sort of issues that, that compound uh, and escalate the seriousness of the problem on our Thames Coast and Thames. So, I hope it does receive the priority that that's required in relationship to the shoreline management plan. So I, I just had a query around the um, obviously with the panel A, Teams Coast, that's one compartment, but the 
Coromandel coal has got three compartments, and obviously, I would guess maybe two and a half times as much coastline, maybe three times as much coastline. But, but that's still just going to be one panel? Yes, it is. So, how, I mean, that potentially is going to be a lot more work than the Thames one, but way more variety of, you know, steep cliff faces and all that kind of thing. How is that going to make sure that that Coromandel coal panel is not completely swamped by? Yeah, I, I think you're right in terms of geography and um, coastal process challenges, but in terms of the project, probably the more difficult thing is the people and the number of people and communities that you're dealing with. Yeah. And so looking at the different makeup, I'd say that the Thames Coast and Thames with all the various communities would be as challenging as, as that oh. larger area in the Coromandel. My no. question is the opposite of Martin's actually, because when you're dealing with things on the coast, yes, there's an interface between where the water is and where the land is, but a lot of the influences that happen at a coastal level happen like way the hell back up in the hills and down in the plains. And so my question is how are you going to capture the influence of the land onto the coast? Um. Okay, sorry. Slight really that's influencing coastal process yeah. um, and so the technical experts are taking into account sediment inputs and what that means <coughs> to growing or shrinking sand dunes. So it's, it's part of the project but the project doesn't look to manage what's happening in the, the whole catchment. Um, so there's a it's recognised that that influences it, but it's it's slightly outside of the scope. Well, of yeah, because mangroves are a classic example, and yeah, they grow in here in the estuary, and they're there, and they're annoying people, you know, want to cut them down. But actually, what the process that's causing the mangroves to be grown here is something that's happening for those of you listening way over there, and so that's kind of yeah. I, I just I want to to know how you're going to deal with that because yeah, it's all very well to sit here and go, oh, it's ruining our view, or whatever, but actually, uh, you know, as somebody who owns property right on the sea, I can't influence that as well as somebody who owns property way out of the valley, so. Yep. Process is a big So there's some challenges, <laughs> that's yeah. for sure. So it's probably one of our most important pieces of work. Peter, can you, would you like to feed into this conversation as well? Yep, I'll we'll figure out how to turn the microphone on. Um, I, I, I think one of the real strengths here is the um, is the establishment of the panels, which are broad, um, and I think that's really good, and I think that's very exciting. But I think it's a huge challenge, and so people who are going to be on that are going to have to. Um, you know, speech marks behave, but you know, going to have to just just make sure that they're working towards getting stuff done. Um, there is no doubt that we need to start, really start doing some stuff. I and mean, as Sally pointed out, you, we, we just can't ignore some of these things and we need to, you know, start factoring them in and taking them into account. But from my point of view, I, just, I think the establishment of these panels is a really strong move, um, engaging with stakeholders. Um, and I'm, I'm just keen to see them um, get underway and, and and start getting some stuff done. Yeah, no, good comment. All right, any further comments from the board? I haven't got anything further to add to the report. Um, no, just just an ideal situation, and it doesn't have to happen. But if, if we were able to receive nominations, um, that that would be great. But there is one. Um, we're looking for nominations from the community boards uh, that are not councillors. Um, just a point yeah. of clarity there. Is that because of the decision making process down the line and, and just remaining? Yes. To yeah. move from so that they could. Yeah. We have the councillors can be observers, yeah. but no, not voting. Yeah. I was just looking for the rationale behind that it's because they might have to make some of the major decisions. Yes, so yes, that's part of it. Are we allowed to nominate Cherie while she's not here? Yeah, I do believe she was interested. Yeah, I think we can. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Straight, are you interested in playing no, the or or oh, anyway? No, my situation is that um, we have two community board members passionate about wanting to be involved with this, and Cherie uh, lives off the coast. Yeah. Uh, she has for 30 years, she's lived off the coast, and yeah. she has a strong interest in the whole subject, mm. and so has Peter. So I'm happy for that, and I can be the conduit to supporting their efforts. Cool. Uh, they're always going to be there. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, uh, mm. To the process. Uh, so it doesn't need to be a direct involvement. And there's certainly a strong <laughs> involvement, just like the councillors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, there is a suggested resolution here. Uh, receives the Shoreline Management Plan Project update, dated May 2020. And resolved, which we really resolved, to nominate two Thames Community Board members for representation on the Thames Coast uh, Coastal Panel. Uh, and I would like to move that we, we, um, we nominate Cherie Staples, one, and Peter Revel, two. Uh, if everyone's in agreement with yeah, those excellent. nominations, and we have a move and second for those nominations, can we do them back together like that? Yeah, one, yep. one, um, absolutely. Yep. Sally so moved. Second. Thanks, Cheryl. Second. Um, so they are the nominations. So, uh, so that's really cool. Uh, thank you, Peter, and thank you, Sheree, wherever you are now, <laughs> for putting your hands up in relationship to this because that is a very important subject for us over the next three years, probably the most important subject that we're doing. Uh, so good on you, and, uh, and I'm sure the community board and everybody will give the council will give everybody support along the way. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, thank you. I look forward to working with you, Peter. Sure. Thanks. 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 That's it, I'm done, Mariana. Perfect. 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 Wow. Yeah. So I'll take the, well, uh, take the actual schedule as read. Uh, Ariana, I'm not sure whether you would like to add any comments to it. Uh, um, not particularly. No. Um, we do have an attachment there that requires formal approval. Attachment A, a letter to the NZTA. Right. That's coming from the extract. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Can, can we talk to that? Sure. Sure. Uh, so, I'd like to talk to that. Right. Um, so, since, uh, since Alan Young yeah. came yeah. and presented about that, I've had uh, through my association with my entire school, I've had several uh, parents and teachers from the school who have said that obviously not everyone who goes to my entire school lives on the uh, western side of Queen Street. Obviously, there's people who live at Charu and also on the east side of Queen Street. And uh, the school is about a block and a half or so from that intersection, so I don't know if that affects NZTA's decision around whether they consider that um, close enough. But yeah, I, particularly if I'm going to the school first in the morning, I see a steady little trail of children having across Queen Street and that intersection with. Um, with is it Burke Street, Burke Street Burke, yeah. Angie Price yeah. is a bad enough intersection just for vehicles because people aren't always sure if that because it's not perfectly a, a place people get confused about where they're going and yeah. um, people are still hitting 70 as they come around that corner into Pollen Street and there's no there's no pedestrian crossings and then also further up the coast you've got the Gold Mine you've got the Coast Civil and St John's you've got the barbecue, Kirinui Bay, then you've got the shop on the corner, and then you've got the 
Centre. Um, the Centre. Cultural Centre, should know the name of that. And then you've got the, the Sailing Club. And yeah, I, while I support the letter about the reduction of speed limit, I think it would be a good opportunity with NZTA um, in a webinar thing I did last week that they're uh, talking about um, accessibility because of the COVID-19 type of thing. I would like to see this request possibly be a bit broader as far as some, I know it might make it more tricky, but I think if we do it as one hit, we can get support of um, the gold mine, the attractions, St John's, the dairy, the school, all those groups together and say, yeah, here's a submission from the school, here's a submission, and bundle all that together in some magical way and we have a right yes we want to get speed limit down but we also want to have some pedestrian crossings along the way how could that all happen and try to do an integrated approach i agree that's my thoughts right i don't know if anyone would disagree with you it's just the how yeah, yeah and it's like what is the role of the regional transport committee what is the role of tony fox what is the role of bruce's team in mm -hmm. making that happen because yep. I was a spectacular failure on the regional transport oh. committee meeting, told frequently that by people that sure may know this, that tried to look at speed and was always we need a national consistency, we need a process, and can this council systematically didn't want to lower speeds until they want to do it in individual places at an individual time. So I don't think we're well placed, frankly, to get a coordinated approach, but we never give up to life. And so to me, this letter might be a start of something else, but I'm pretty sure that if we just send this letter, it will get filed and nothing no. will happen. Well, and so I support your idea of doing something different. It's just we need to take advice on the what. I was at the same webinar, and that was the type of dot quite strong message that they were that NZTA were putting out. That actually, yes, there's the innovative streets funding, but they said approach us, talk to us about anything else that you want done because their their recognition was well, yes, roads are for cars, but roads are actually for all sorts of users and. And other modes of transport need to have that have their time in the sun. What do you think, Bruce? <clears throat> um, so I, I think it's all good, and we didn't hear lots of stuff from NZTA, and I try not to be negative. Well, I still need them. But, um, <laughs> um, but um, we always get lots of good feedback and stuff at the high level when they talk about it. And as soon as you approach them, you get a stamp of the good feedback. Often, often, I shouldn't say always, but you know what I mean? And, so it does get filed. My thoughts on this are that um, you want to try and get, so I think we should send, I think the council should send this from Strat, um, but I think you do want to encourage those other organisations to also send this as well. So you don't want to do it for you. I wouldn't do it together, I'd do it separately so that they get four or five things that are all talking about the same thing, which I think. So lots of, so lots of squeaky wheels. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, rather than one squeaky wheel, neither which has five signatures in it, and it's filed that. So, so my thoughts are. Um, definitely a good idea, and there are lots of um, inputs and lots of um, parties and stakeholders to this. And I think we need to, I don't know how, it's probably just rustling them up and trying to get them, you know, if they actually support it, which I would say they would, yeah. get them to get their letter going through as well. So um, that would be all I could suggest at this stage. Yeah. Um, it has been a real challenge. Um, I don't agree that you were spectacular failure on the on the um, <laughs> well, I'm speed. But um <laughs> but I, I think it's a real challenge around the speed of the stuff because we've been talking about a regional approach and a national approach for a long time. And it makes sense to do that coordinated approach, but it's just dragged on and dragged on. And you know, us as staff and you as an are comfortable in the middle between doing what is a good idea and the community just saying, why would you hurry up and change the speed limits? You know, so you know it's it's coming apparently this year or next year, um, but we have been doing it for a long time. And we just need to keep pushing in this space. I, I feel like we're actually going to get that change now. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we're just going to keep pushing and doing what we can do. So, so that, that change being. So, it's around the regional and the national approach to speed management. So, we're doing like a. Um, 
three management guide that they call it, which is then it sets up and tries to get some consistency because no, like what they don't want, which we've had in the past, is that TCDC can change all these own speed limits to whatever. And then Hurricane you do something which is totally different. And then another API goes something different. And you as a driver, you're driving between these across these district boundaries and going, what the heck? This doesn't feel like that I've just come from it. Yeah, because the whole thing about speed is, is it's intuitive in how it feels. You know, so and they talk about this a lot as a speed environment, and we've probably talked about it a lot as well, which I know gets a little bit annoying people when they say just whack up a 50k sign to deal with these people who are going too fast in the 70k zone. But the whole thing, all the research suggests, and all the research backs this up, that that doesn't do anything unless the speed environment feels appropriate for that speed. And it's all about side friction, they call it, and all the stuff, which is, you know, as you, and so what they do is um, we want to slow people down. You, you bring in more stuff on the side. So as you get to like little towns, and there's the threshold signs, which are actually quite close to the road, but you see drugs, but on the whack and bend them. Yeah. But the idea is getting closer to actually. People feel that pressure on that side, that friction, and then they go, oh, I better slow down. So there's more trees close to the edge of the road, and plants, and signs, and extra crossing instead of having a little bump. Yeah, you have those three shots that come out, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, it's just that humans are, it's intuitive, you know, and yeah. yeah. we just go, oh, I better slow down. But if it's a big, wide road, the whole plane's been whacked up some 50k signs on the middle of the plane, it doesn't do anything. You saw that when had those roadwork signs for about nine months yeah. of 50, it's like, what slows down because it doesn't feel like it should be going to 50. So I know that's a long winded, a bit of a challenge and a bit of a um, frustration that you can't just wait and sign up, but um, you've got to do a coordinated effort um, and the speeds have to feel appropriate. And that's what part of this um, uh, regional and national approach to managing speed and setting speed limits is all about you know, that you don't get you know, TCDC or say an HTC or a 50k sign. Middle of the plane, you know, um, so, yeah, so that's what it's all about. Yeah, but I think on this yeah. one, I think definitely yeah. letters, support, you know, yeah, just what I'm talking about the approach, you know, yes. uh, you know, like in terms of a letter from the chair of the Tension Community Board, I wonder whether we should be broadening out the scope of that in terms of some of the concerns that our community's had in relationship to it. It's well documented for yeah. the last couple of years, a few years, this has been a, yeah. a, a you know, a hot subject. And there should be a lot of um, a lot of historical information there in terms of just what's been fed into the system. There's been a lot of public submissions. I remember uh, Clancy Dixon was one of them, strong one. Uh, there's a lot of many submissions to this. I wonder if we should get the police involved. Well, that might sound silly, but I was on a regional transport forum here a couple of years ago, and it was. Um, the police were talking about the uh, court boot, you know, it was 17, yeah. and then it was 18, and then it was 17, yeah. and then yeah. it was 50, <laughs> and how difficult it was for people to understand yes. that, and the police were so to police it, to police it. and bang, within a very short space of time, that was made a little bit more okay. consistent. I know, I'm sorry, Peter. No, it's right. um, yeah, so I, I just wondered if, if perhaps we approach them and uh, see if they've got issues yeah. with it. Because yeah. as soon as the police become involved in something, everybody takes notice. Mm. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, so, your comments on board, you know, I mean, is it going to matter to diddly squat? What goes well, I think that it? if you send that letter, and it could be adjusted to say, you know, this is this, you know, community board has numerous other people, and then if you, you know, we can easily say to Alan Young, you know, his letter would be very different from the principles yeah. of Monetary, but both of them would be crucial, different styles, mm -hmm. and so I think Bruce's exactly. idea of getting a bit of a thing going and then go from there. Yeah. The lifestyle trust. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of yes. uh, community and organisations that feel strongly about this in terms of that collective area and what's actually happening over there in terms of making it safer. So you wonder, you know, wonder whether there's a, a petition that we should be doing, initiating a petition. Um, you know, I'd like to take that separate approach. I'd like to take that separate approach rather than like a form game or the whole yeah, thing yeah. on. Yeah. You know, it's not an approach St. John's, you know, the driveway comes out yeah, into yeah, yeah, exactly. the coast civil, mm. coast civil, you know, or just, I would just put Yeah. Lots of people, you know. Mm. Is that an Thanks easy thing to coordinate to get going? <coughs> um, to get that 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 information yeah. that it's required for it? Should we? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Here, Bruce, but um, I, uh, I'm supportive of the thrust of what we're trying to do there. I think it's really good. Um, I was just when I was going to say something again, like 
it all looks like it's sort of moving forward. There's nothing that jumps out for me. I, what I took a deep breath was I was just acknowledging in the, um, the use of local contractors for the footpath upgrades. I've had a lot of, and he's quite well known, um, the guy that's got the contract, I've forgotten his nickname at the moment. But um, for, yeah, and how positive people are seeing our local smaller contractors doing work that they can. So just wanting to update that um, principle, if it's possible, especially in this, these times, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll pass that to the jury. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so yeah, so that's a good point about using local contractors and we do try and do that where we can. Often um, a lot of our programs are delivered through our maintenance contracting, so broad spectrum, but what they will often do is they will often use the local contractors as well, you know, so again it's about using the right contractors for the right skill set um, and managing the right things and different contractors have a different skill set. So, um, so Boogie Duffin, who I think you're talking about before, yeah. he does a lot of that stuff, and him and his crew do a good job, you know. So he's well suited to do that kind of work. Yeah. Um, whereas broad spectrum is probably, you know, they're well suited to do some of the bigger stuff, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So it's a bit of mix and match, yeah, definitely. Um, but obviously, with council and local government having to go through competitive procurement processes for everything, that does make things a little bit more challenging, you know. So we do get feedback quite often about use more local contractors, but we are bound by procurement rules, and so it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a balance, like yep. those things. Yeah. Yep, and thanks, Bruce. Um, thanks for moving to the table, Bruce. Much easier to hear. No, no problem. Sorry about that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Good so budget-wise, I mean, looking at this, it looks like a whole lot of them are on the budget because of COVID-19 and people haven't been out and about. So I had a question for Bruce, is that, is this just automatically, I don't know what process is, is it just automatically, if we've spent 10,000 or 90,000, does it just automatically, if the project's already underway, does that just automatically carry on into uh, the annual plan? Or so, we... so through the chair, it doesn't, it doesn't automatically carry through, no. So, um, so some projects, if they've got contracts let, we're, we're obligated and we'll need to carry that across, but that's a process that goes through council. So in other projects, we might make a call and say, we haven't managed to get the achievement, but we're under some, some pressure as a community and as a council, and therefore we don't want to carry that money across. And those are decisions that the council, council makes. So as part of the annual plan deliberations, there'll be quite a few discussions around that. Uh, and then normally we have a, a process that we do in like kind of July, where we look at carry forwards, where we haven't achieved a certain amount of budget uh, spending a certain amount of budget in the, in the financial year, we want to carry that stuff across. Um, so that, it's kind of wrapped up a little bit with the um, with the annual plan deliberations this year. So definitely, we're welcoming the community board involvement in those kind of things. So the community board could look at a particular project and say, "Well, we think that's important," and then the councillors would take that forward. Yeah, so I think I think it's it's really about the community board making sure that, that you and the other two councillors know what their views are so that when you're the three of you are sitting around the council table doing the deliberations and going through the annual plan, um, if there's um, if there's you know projects that are key for the team's community board that, that that voice is heard around the council table. So and I'm not saying you're gonna get them all, you know, it's uh, yeah. like all things it's a it's a balance and a negotiation and uh, concessions have to be made, you know, especially at the moment obviously we're in a Precedented time, so mm -hmm. yeah, sure, yeah, but good to know what your priorities are. Yeah. 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 Those front yeah. so, so, that would be useful for us as councillors if there's any direct feedback, or even as the three of us men with you strap to go through yeah. this or with even yeah. pre those deliberations so that we clear that this is the A game, mm -hmm. and you know, we're really fighting for this, and we'd be prepared to give up that sort of thing because we will have to have leeway. So the more information we've got about what's important to the community board, well, then the better we can advocate for this area. Yeah, so it's really clear um, sooner point. rather than later. Yeah, if you could do that, um, because from a staff point of view, we have a discussion, and I don't know if that guidance for those discussions that we really um, 
navigating to the point to end in terms of preparing that information for your deliberation. So, yeah, you know, yeah. deliberation is right. So, so, right. Yeah, so the papers will be being done as we speak. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, can I leave it to you guys to coordinate a, a discussion or meeting? Okay. Yeah, so do we want, you know, Aaron has got three community boards, like, do we meet? The three of us in June to and then one person feedback to Erin, or do we ask Erin if she's available for that meeting? Or? We ask if Erin's available for that meeting. Let's make that clear. Yeah, before we leave today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, just getting back on track in terms of, I mean, there's a few areas here that uh, obviously been put back. Stormwater aspects. Yeah, so, uh, so through the chair, there's a, it's a range of um, projects here. Some of them are, are, are going full speed ahead now, and they'll actually um, they'll actually get to their, their conclusion, and they'll spend their budget. And other ones will have slowed right down due to, due to COVID nineteen, and they actually won't get achieved this year. So there's a there's a range of, um, of projects there. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions on here. Yeah, especially the Totra Valley extension and Totra Valley. So Tot yeah, so Totra Valley extension, that's one that we um, that we made the call earlier in the year to pull that back mm -hmm. to just investigations and just look at, yeah, I think it was five or ten thousand dollars per uh, line item because there's like four line items of three waters of roading to look at that. Um, so obviously that's one that's um, that was in the annual plan and then that'll be considered as part of the deliberations whether that project moves on or not. Um, so it's been uh, there's been quite a bit of work there looking at investigating it, so we've done quite a lot there. So you, the investigation costs will flow through to these budgets, but like I say, it's only kind of probably 10k per budget by the end of this year, and then the fiscal works will move on next year if it gets through the annual plan process. And that's certainly a hot topic around the um, council about whether it's a worthwhile project or not. So we will be fighting for that. And yeah, um, what was Fits into our special planning opportunities. It does. I suppose the only caution I'd throw in there is that um, this year is going to be very different with COVID nineteen. You know, so we obviously we're getting a lot of feedback as far as the annual planning process and the annual plan hearings around rates uh, and all that stuff. So again, it's um, if we had had the COVID nineteen situation, it would be a lot clearer. You know, as far as this is your priority, let's carry on and do it. So what I'm saying is that. You, we're going to have to. Um, there's going to be a lot of conversations, concessions, decisions around that council table. I would imagine as part of those deliberations. So, um, so again, going back to what we just talked about, that's key to make sure that you guys are all on the same page around what your priorities are as a community board heading into those. Yes, and the connection with our town's community board in regard to supporting those conversations too is really important. Um, so, yeah, they must make sure that we're well in the loop. Yeah, very well. <laughs> because the 9.8 advertised pre COVID um, was going to be contentious enough. Yeah. Post COVID, it's like it, you can't do it. And so um, something's going to have to go. And a lot of it will be, uh, you know, the ways you'd have to look at it is as um, as you're right, things will go. <clears throat> But it won't necessarily go forever, so it might be deferral, you know, so it might be just having to like take a little bit longer to get where we're going. You know? So there's going to be a range of a range of um, options around those things, I would imagine. I just had a couple of um, queries if I may. Um, just around the two actually right next to each other, um, Tim Zierfield Master Plan and Creative Vibes Thames. Um, so on that, there's an update for the Thames Airfield Master Plan says the update is complete, um, notice of requirement, blah, blah, blah. So is that, is that quite close? Is, was, was that the change to allow the, um, the, the things to be built there and people to um, live, on, live on top of the hangars or whatever that was? Is that related to that? Uh, three minutes ago, that's correct. Um, the, because of COVID, we did a get to our workshop on the Teams Airfield, so we've got that scheduled for your special meeting on the 10th, I think it is, 10th of June. So yeah. we'll have a workshop that includes not only operational matters, but also an update on the master plan and information. So any long back will be available to kind of go into details of that and give you an overview. So. Well, I was just sort of aware that there was some angst towards the end of last year about that 
Monday's option was our master plan, and uh, I'm just sort of concerned that I realise we've had COVID and everything, but now here we are in May, potentially June, um, and I would imagine the people that were concerned back then are probably still concerned now. So through the chair, my understanding is that that concern was around um, being able to erect hangars on the airfield, but not necessarily the um, high zero residential hangars. So that normal hangars can still be built as they have been building them. It's just that that, that change, that little nuance around the academic residential component. So um, I understand that we're really close, but I'll need to get an update from anyone who's to just with that say, I have a conversation yes. with oh, well, I mean, uh, the Tasman Media Board would appreciate an update on a number of areas. So that's so one, that's one of them. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. Really good. Um, are you okay with that part of the discussion? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, can I just ask can I just ask a question about the WinTech design factory stuff? Um Aaron, are you getting are you getting a sense that this is going to be a really productive exercise or too early to say? Um, so through the chair, it's been a little challenging because uh, we're doing face-to-face -face discussions with the students and that was really something and we kind of went on to Zoom and then they had a holiday, so we just kind of get back on track. Um, I've had some emails um, recently from them. Uh, it's been quite interesting. I'm really encouraging them to be like, really innovative and think outside the square and just provide them guidance on do they're coming up with things like we've done that before, or, you know, because obviously they're not going to know, you know, all those things. So um, I'm hopeful, um, Peter, that it will be um, really worthwhile. Um, I was going to alert the board to the fact that they normally run a gala um, to kind of celebrate and present their findings. Um, as a conclusion of the semester. So the 11th of June, they are going to be doing a webinar, which I'm happy to send an invite to the board to attend. Um, but I have also um, asked if the students be available to come to the July meeting, so they can, there's two teams working on um, our problems, so I'll invite them to come on July to present to you. So, um, really, I'm just really keen to get them really involved, and that's such a great opportunity to partner with them. So, but early to say, Peter, but I'm very hopeful that, um, especially with a bit of staff steering, just to around just yeah, thinking out about this. Yeah. I got I got the impression from talking with Teams Business Association that TBA misread the opportunity to provide input to to the um, design factory. And I was just wondering whether that might be able to be rectified or resurrected. That they might be able to, I don't know, <laughs> um, somehow get 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 that input because I, 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 I'm reluctant or not keen to get into a situation where the businesses in town feel that something else is, something's being done to them rather than done with them. So as you chair, I haven't received any feedback from the TBA. Uh, initially, they were invited as part of the process and weren't involved, so we actually had to create a special afternoon for them to come in. Um, and it's certainly not a case of um, having anything done. The, the winter will come up with some ideas, and they simply are ideas, and it's up to you know, all of the community and council as to which aspects they want to take up. So um, I haven't had any feedback from the TBA around misreading it, and certainly um, from my point of view, starting at the extra mile to um, provide an opportunity um, at really short notice um, to accommodate their, their work. So, um, the Winter students also didn't just talk to TBA, they were in the um, community, just at large surveying um, as well. So, um, if there's feedback, I have been in receipt of it to date. Cool. Okay, thank you. Right. Um, so, Aaron, you might want to talk to that Innovating Streets application uh, that I know you put a lot of work into and I've supported it with the letter uh, that I included in my um, this report. Just to um, explain yeah, it. Yeah, it was, um, can I say, it was really fun. <laughs> um, doing an Innovating Streets application, I'm really proud of what we put in. I'm not sure um, if the odds in terms of the little amount available and how many applications they received, so I'm like 80 something applications from 34 councils for the wow. first round. So, um, 
and I know Stephen had been something I've gone to Wellington City Council already. So, <laughs> uh, but in any case, um, yeah, I'm really proud that we put forward. So we put forward through to them um, because it's around piloting, and so we put forward to them around uh, piloting for Mary Street, which is a, a core component of the Team Streetscape mm -hmm. um, work. Um, we put forward some um, ideas around what that might look like, obviously, with some um, uh, um, commentary around the fact that we would you know, do some co-design work with the community around what that would actually look like, which, as you know, is a passion of, um, particularly of mine. So, um, but our landscape architect got some really great ideas through we and uh, talked about you know, all the things that would have to happen in order for um, that closure to work to, to pilot that. So, um, if the board would like a copy of it, I'm absolutely happy to send it to you. Um, and I think I'm happy to do that. Um, yeah, it was a very fast turnaround with the time frames. But I think that the great thing about it is that, um, irrespective of whether we get the funding, that work is not wasted, but it's a component of what we want to do moving yeah. forward. So, um, from a um, from a staff point of view, um, it was a really good um, yeah. piece of work. Perspective. So, um, if you'd like us to circulate that, I'm happy to do so. Please. And also, I'd just like to also discuss the idea of um, an update to the um, stakeholder group, um, being Tent Business Association, the Sculpture Group. There was a, a coordinated team that were in behind the um, CBD upgrade streetscape plans. Uh, it's important that we actually give them an update in terms of all the things we're doing, especially the Boston Municipal Streetscape Plans um, that we've had done, and the where to is from now and what and what's actually happening. So, in terms of those costs, I would like to see some costs that went in behind that plan so that the new board has an update in relationship to everything relating to it. So, so through the chair, I can provide some update on the street scat work. So um, we, my understanding, I, have, I haven't been uh, involved in that per se, but we did put forward some street scat work to the Shovel Ready uh, program of work to the government. Um, in terms of the costings, uh, we had a we had a ballpark, but we were looking to just refine things down further. Um, it may be that we would like to do a proportion of um, the CBD upgrade. Uh, so from a staff point of view, our advice was that we would really like to refine that looking forward to our GP because um, to provide you, to provide that kind of number and circulate that initial number um, could, could be detrimental to sort of moving that project forward. So I'd really like to come forward to you with some options around how I might stage that um, because as a whole block um, you can't yeah. yeah. So we do, um, can I just ask Bruce, it, it would be your comment as well, wouldn't it? We really would like to come to the board with some staging options. Yeah. Yes. Rather than, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to circulate that to the public ground at this stage until, well, A, you've got those options, and B, you actually are in agreement with actually putting it into the RTP because if the board decides not to, um, you know, can kind of raise an expectation. So, yeah, I think that approach is a good, it's a good approach. Yeah, yeah. it makes sense. What I hear you saying though, Strat, is that people, so that they might get the debt, people want to feel involved so that it doesn't get to the stage when mm -hmm. we haven't got engagement because people feel that it, it's been done to them. Mm -hmm. So how do you get that balance right? Is that what you're saying, Strat, that this people... No, I, I am saying that. I'm saying that, uh, you know, a major stakeholder in this was the Tenth Business Association and, and other groups and so it's really important that we, we uh, discuss the ideas going forward in terms of the cost, you know, of the ideal scenario, not losing concept, not losing sight of the quality of what we're trying to do for Thames and how we might go about it. Because it's really important that you get that steep, key, they call the key coordinator type response and involvement. There might be other key coordinators that could be involved in a plan like that ultimately that you know the plan that Boston was good uh, that, that would feed into the process um, to get the best result for teams. And there may be all sorts of opportunities that might come out of that <laughs> in terms of um, external funding opportunities or partnerships or those sort of things that get them buy into the plan. 
Now, I had to just sort of cut off our nose to spot our faces with, with trying to reduce the plan to something that fits without that wider consultation, you know what I mean, without that wider, wider buy-in and an input in relationship to it. And I think most, most people that might be involved in the key stakeholder group might sort of say, well, you know, we understand the challenges that are in front and they need to know what those challenges are and how they might help us in what, what you're saying, Aaron, you know, in terms of the way we are considering moving it forward without losing the concept of that quality that we want for our town. Uh, I hate to see that compromise. So there might be ways of looking at that in a better way. That's all I'm saying. Um, so I would like to see some sort of action points or targeted actions or action plan around that that um, that streetscape plan that involves key coordinators uh, to to feed into the process and help us get there. At the end of the day, I mean, it might take some time. I know we've got some challenges with finances and stuff like that at the moment, but um, and I think just don't want a single approach to it. People might have a miscomment that often this will have done a thing that there is going to be a planter box there, that it's one way, it's two way, it's five way, and, and to me it's still a composite plan and people feel, I think, because they have seen it, that there's some kind of secret um, whole lot of stuff already happened and that they haven't got an input. So it's just that balance. I can see me both sides. Yeah, so, so through the two, through. I think it's a little bit of chicken and egg situation. Yeah, yeah, um, I guess, can I just, I'm just off top of my head, have to make a suggestion here. Would it be useful um, for the team and I to um, have a we think about action plan? I'm thinking about things around funding um, of board, perhaps in principle support for us moving forward the streets that because we haven't we haven't formally done that around um, around a potentially a stakeholder group um, around what community engagement might look like. Ideally, I have sort of um, doing some of the engagement prior to the you know, the long term plan, but again, um, circumstances kind of got ahead of us. But, but if we could um, have the opportunity just to have a little think about what that might look like and then bring it perhaps to the 10th of June um, community court to consider, would that, would that be useful oh, so very, that everyone's in agreement? Yeah, very useful, Aaron. I think, you know, it's just getting that action plan in place and those key components of an action plan that can further that Boston Municipal Streetscape Plan, yes. which which was a good plan in the sense that it, I mean, everything's not exact. And everything, uh, you know, it's a, it's a living document in the sense of the changes that might be required. But, but uh, it's a good beginning point, and it, and it also involved touch tends uh, urban design uh, in a strong sense uh, in that plan. So it has to. I think it just has, has to engage in the key areas of our community to, to bring bring those aspects through ultimately get that buy-in and see how we can move move it forward for our town. So um, I know there's going to be some huge challenges from a finance point of view. It might take some time, as you say, in the middle of the day. Mm. Uh, but don't try and do it all on your own. And I think it's really important that we do have that that that. Uh, opportunity to work with partnering with major aspects of that plan with key coordinators of my yep. big part of even the external funding process ultimately mm -hmm. you know, yep. that they yep. might bring through. <laughs> so um, yeah, that, that's all I'm saying. It needs a higher level targeted approach in terms of uh, <coughs> this particular area of work that I'm passionate about for our town and trying to move it forward. So, I want to see that higher level of engagement related to an action plan and some real thoughts coming behind what we can do to do What I guess that guys struggle with is trying to address this, this idea that, um, you know, however many multi million it might be, but, and you know, it's that whole thing about how do you eat an elephant or, you know, one part at a time, but do we identify? But if we identify particular chunks and then you know say, oh right, well we've done that, but 
like a struggle of how we can do a whole. He needs to mute his phone. A I whole, know you need to mute. <laughs> a whole integrated um, plan that's going to work. So, what was I saying? That's a great help. You know, um, yeah, the, yeah, so the whole stage is so whether we, you know, we, we, we don't want to put a big thing up there saying, okay, you know, 12 million. And have we have other councillors and they go, well, like, oh, we can't do that. But yeah, I just sort of struggle with how we, how yeah. we I don't know how a really good action plan would bring that together. Yeah, yeah, it's great to bring it to you. I think the, the other challenge um, that I have in my mind is around street stack and you've also got the poll. Yeah, so that's what I, I'm really keen to have a discussion on. So we've got, uh, um, got the poll and another uh, workshop item at the other team that could be a, um, a link in there. Um, but I think we really need to have those really free and frank conversations around that so um, we can provide an update on the poll um, for the street and scape. Um, I did want to um, signal as well, uh, as well around the um, create the five teams if you'd like us to include some projects in there and have a discussion around that funding side of things because um, we have kind of come to a standstill, uh, if I'm going to be honest, because, um, you know, um, with all the will in the world, um, and was trying to still do things um, in an efficient manner. We can't do it without any funding available. So, um, yeah, yeah, okay, so like, um, <laughs> not that need to. Um, so, perhaps, like, the answer is also made as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they need to sound here. Yeah, being here. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no magic bullet, <laughs> no but it's really important that we have that goal and that cohesive plan going forward if we can't do it now. Yeah. Because of our financial uh, situation, um, you know, just to look forward to a plan that actually engages really in the right sectors to make us succeed at the end of the day that I'm most interested in. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah, so if we achieve the hexagon, um, yeah, it could be a good um, starting point. Um, you know, that, yeah, that a long term plan as well. So, it's really good um, start and point team as well. Yeah. And it heads up to what we need to be providing for that program of work. Yeah, I think that's a good point. The other thing I'd add is that uh, with any of these things, it's really um, it's all about timing, about how you engage with the partners in the community. You know, it's that whole thing of what you don't want to be sitting here, we develop a whole plan and then go out and go, if we are, we're doing this to you. But you also don't want to go out too early where you don't have anything to yeah, actually think about. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. we're going to do 100 different things. What do you think? You know, it's like yeah. decision fatigue, you know, that's like, <laughs> yeah, and again, expectation management, you know, is and again, it's strength. So. That's where we get, you know, if we're, if we're looking for stage, I want to kind of have that sort of information available. Now, even if it's not really exactly what it is on the plan around a sensible approach that you might do over a couple of years. So, yeah. Um, rather than kind of, we're just going to do this a little bit. Yeah, so um, I think it's just a bit of work, a bit of thinking to be going yeah. through. I'm just looking for that consistency and that connection so that it doesn't become ad hoc yeah. and it doesn't become something that is totally different to what tends, what makes up tends. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this is what the document has been all about the Boston Fiscal Plan. Um, yeah. The uh, TUDS plan has been part of what makes tends. And for us, and we don't want things going off on a tangent that are totally different to what the overall concept is, and that's really important. So we need to work and target that in terms of what low hanging fruit we might be targeting to do versus knowing that that is consistent with the long term plan of what TEMS wants <laughs> or what is best for TEMS in terms of its identity and character. All of those things have been taken into account, I think, with that Boston Fiscal Plan and, and Touch. And, um, it's a very good plan, but I know it's a lot to achieve along the way to try and get there, but just make sure that whatever pieces we're doing is consistent with that plan. Um, if we think that plan is the right one. <laughs> so uh, that's what I'm really planning to see an action plan around it uh, and how that might best bring in the key areas of that action plan and how to delegate to key responsible, key areas of coordinator roles in that community that might add to that plan and help us get there. <laughs> That's the whole point I'm trying to make. I think it's really important. I, I gave a uh, thing on my members report to a large
largest state wise, work for the 10th region, I believe, would be a really good thing to do. But uh, it still falls down to, or drills down to, um, this particular major piece of work that we're doing for our town um, in the same sense. <laughs> so, yeah. Can, um, can I respectfully request that five minute I need to well, go by 20 past. Yes. Well, if we, if we continue on a public scope, we can stop with the recording. Yes. We need to go, right? We're going pretty rapidly. We can go now. We need to go. I'll move that we receive the work program. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Peter did Morning, Bailey. Aye. Aye. All right, there, Peter. Yep. Oh. Yep. Good. I said aye. Yes. Yes. Um, members report seven point three. Um, um, thanks for the written ones. Yeah, well, we decided we'd do that because we're a bit limited to time today. Mm. So, and and it's, so, it's quite nice to receive them. Mm. Yeah, and I think we need to rationalise something around that in terms of um, going back to the old system. But yeah, absolutely. Having, having some members' reports and, yeah. and uh, you know sending it out a week or two before the meetings and people just stop them what they've been doing. <laughs> Great idea. Uh, Peter, you, you've given an excellent members' report and update relating to the airfield and uh, our business network that we've both been working on as, as league coordinators there. Um, would you like to speak to your members' report, thanks, Peter? Uh, no, look, I'm I'm happy that the report is as read. It's it's clearly both those both the airfield and TBA are are, are currently very active um, in terms of you know what the where things are tracking, and we've got you know some critical meetings coming up around both of those. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. If I was going to speak to anything on the report, it would be about. The fantastic, uh, fantastic way that community has has been kind of re-energised within the valley as a result of a uh, result of the lockdown, being absolutely sensational. Um, yeah. You know, all all sorts of things popping up all over the place. I think we've done three or four collections so far for the Romans Refuge. There's another one coming up. You know, based around tamarillos and pijos and yeah, what. Yeah. Um, uh, on Monday. Yep. Yeah. 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 That would be good. But outside of that, if, if there's any questions, I'm happy to respond to any questions on my report. Any questions? I think it's an excellent report, Mr. Peter, and it says what it needs to say. So thank you. Uh, similarly, I've done a report, and I'll have to being read. That's why I tried to speak for that earlier and let you know what I've, what I've been up to. And I mean, that's what it's all about, trying to just keep you all up to date. With it. Ultimately, when you have to make a final decision regarding some of these things that are on the table, <laughs> so um, that's what it's all about. Uh, any, any other members' reports? Well, just one yeah. last one. I think the three of us could get together and probably work out who's going to do a report on the meeting kind of thing. But I just made a few notes. Um, yep. The shoreline management plan was a focus. We've already talked about that, and we've got our community board members, so that's cool. Just for general information, if you're approached by the community, the dog feeds have been set for this coming financial year pre the deliberation, so we can have deliberations on them at the council meeting. So the, for an ordinary dog, it's gone from 75 to 80. Um, if people are worried about that, um, that is still only a proportion of the cost of managing dogs in this area. Mm. And so, um, yeah, it's, dogs cause a lot of um, really bad things in our community. So that's that. Um, the work around the, inter, um, the IAD process, oh, yeah. well, that's gone on hold and there'll be a council workshop about that. There was a lot of questions. And so that so whether that happens during July, August, who knows? And we pray we don't have a tsunami or a <laughs> perfect storm in the meantime. Mm -hmm. The crucial thing, and it's on 4.2 of the plan of the 
um, agenda, if you wanted to go and have a look at it, was the endorsement of the TC, TC Thames and Surround Spatial Plan. And so that was approved. And so that's where the Tota Valley and the work of where is the potential um, for growth and housing on the hills. Yes. <laughs> I call it the hills yeah. from Kōpū to um, the end of our boundary at Hikatai or wherever. So that's uh, beginning to happen, um, and how that happens, I think what we need to keep an eye on how does that get implemented and how does it get prioritised. Um, and I think the reality is on the other side, there's people like Hoppers and that that have got enough invested that it's worth them doing that kind of work in a plan change or whatever to get what they need. This is different for us, and so we have to sell that. And as I say, we have not deliberated as yet around the rates, so we had um, quite a few, um, you know, on this um, way of hearing. I think we heard about 43 of a couple hundred submissions, um, and that's going to be a very interesting discussion. So, very interesting submissions. Um, I yeah. mean, I thought there were some very good submissions. Yeah. And it just is it always interesting if we went around this room and what is core, yeah. we'd get a range. And if you went to the community and asked yeah. what is core, you get an even bigger range. Yes. And so, there by the grace of God, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's good to actually receive the quality of uh, some quality submissions like and receive and so you can add to you. But I think it's worth reading. 4.2 of the agenda, it'll be on the website just so that you know what's been where it's at for this point in time, Cheryl. And because that's your area down there as well. Yeah. And then um, the implementation is the next step and how we go forward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you councillors, I think you've very busy with that program of work. Uh, yeah. Thanks for that report. So, Robin, anything to add to Yeah, a couple of things. I've obviously had a lot of time to think, and I've been thinking about the digital process and how uh, how it's worked for meeting, and it's been really lovely to know that you can not be in a room with somebody and communicate effectively. Um, and the other side of that is I, I think I've been involved in a couple of conversations. I was an invited speaker for Coromandel Greens. They had a, you know, what, what does climate change look like post-COVID, and so um, Dennis Teg and myself and Thomas Everett were the, the, the guest speakers on Zoom. And then they had another one about um, biodiversity, which was fantastic as well. I thoroughly recommend them. They're both on YouTube, if you can watch them. Um, but I really enjoyed the process of the annual plan submissions online, and I really fully support this being a medium that we go to um, as, as we go forward. So it's great having you, Pierre Peter, and, and it's great that this is going to be available for people to look at and watch afterwards. The other thing that really um, that, that struck me is that we do, we have been having these conversations about how wonderful it is to hear birds, how wonderful it is to not have trucks right next to you when you're riding your bike on the road, for example, and, and how quiet it is and there have been people out walking and that, it's, I think this virus has really shown us that we have a lot of potential in our community. We have a lot of resilience in our communities and a lot of cohesion. And we need to be mindful of that as we move forward. I, I think many people have said it, but I'm happy to say it as well. The normal that we had can be improved upon. And so digital technology bringing us all together is one way. And just being aware that our communities are for people who are our neighbours and our our friends is another way of just bearing that in mind when we make a decision. We are making a decision as leaders in our community about our members and the people that we live with, the people that yeah, we go to school with. Absolutely right. And, mm -hmm. and so I really want us as a board to just always bear that in mind. Yeah. Yeah, no, good point. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Um, anything you'd like to comment um, on? So yeah, seven weeks of lockdown. Yeah. Um, I was um, coordinating pretty young social services, um, food parcel, social working counselling from home here, just outside of Thames. Um, did a video for the community board, 
Um, however, I was also involved in a lot of Zoom meetings that were on a regional basis, not just a district basis, but a regional basis. So um, each Tuesday there were two Zoom meetings with civil defence from the group here. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, awesome. They did a fantastic job and still are. And um, also the Budget Advisors Regional Group, um, various other ones as well. So that gives me still an idea of what's happening in the teams, what's happening in the region, trends, all that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, um, so I'm still keeping in touch with yeah. what's going on. Um, and I think they've been absolutely um, really important. Um, yeah, particularly the civil defence ones, because there'd be about 20 or 30 people um, tuning into those, and we could get a really good idea of what was happening and what's still happening. So, yes, yeah. yeah. Well, um, well, their assistance has been great. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome, thank you. Martin, the journey has been all right. <laughs> yes, so yeah, just wanting to, um, yeah, endorse um, what other. Um, community board members have said that it has been, and people keep saying, using the word interesting, <laughs> uh, it's been an interesting last couple of months. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been trying to get to as many uh, webinars and things. Uh, I think the, is it Equip NZ, who the providers for local government New Zealand yeah. have been making freely available um, several sessions. I've tried to get to as many of those as possible. And there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of, well, this is the new normal, what's the new normal, do we, how do we go back to how it was, um, discussions, and yeah, I'm kind of struggling a little bit with how, yeah, how we as community boards and councils try to integrate those um, um, different ideas, you know, lots of let's just get back to core, lots of well, let's forget about core and just do all this other cool stuff. You know, and somewhere in between. Um, yeah, but it has, I, I have found it, um, I'm not going to use that word interesting again, <laughs> challenging. challenging. I, I have been challenged by it. The, the isolation stuff has, um, yeah, has, has affected me a bit. I can be able to go and talk to my dog friends as much as I like to. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Been, that's been quite a rush. I'd just like to draw the attention to something I wrote in the TBA report um, regarding um, I'd like to see you to see this to Bruce or some of your lead strategic uh, in terms of my feelings about the area meeting and Tens regional economic strategy and Tens action plan in a broader sense. Uh, and I gave you some areas of particularly interested to go into a plan like economic growth, employment skills and capability, resilient infrastructure, attracting talent and visitors to our area. There's some key components related to a plan like that, that you would set up an action plan and key coordinator roles and relationships to feed into that process. Uh, even having a, um, a think tanks strategic group uh, that would feed into it. Um, just a little bit of my planning background in terms of, of wanting to see something that really would succeed in the area. I've seen ad hoc type nature things happening in the, in the council framework. And just, just you know, I passed through those thoughts to you because some of the questions that were raised at TBA uh, were strategic questions uh, in terms of just that type of planning. Um, so, I thought it was an opportunity to actually put that some sport. I will we'll talk to Rob, the CEO, about some of those sports and lines of, of thinking. <laughs> uh, and whether it gets anywhere at the end of the day or not, it makes a hell of a lot of good sense to me. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yes. I have to go. I just wanted to acknowledge, I think I'm right, that because I read it in a newsletter that Matt Bushley saw me, which must be true. So I'd just like to acknowledge on behalf of the yes. community board his work for us um, yeah. around making our roads safe, etc. So I just don't want him to go without him knowing 
that we appreciate his work Thank and you. wish him good um, fortunes. I'll pass that on to yeah. And whatever yeah. he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make sure he knows that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, thanks, Jim. It's all right. Yeah, we'll catch up. Yeah. Okay. We'll catch up. Yeah. I'm good. So, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go that way, so I skipped the math. Peter, if you're all right with everything that's been set so far. <laughs> Hello, Peter. Sorry. Oh. They're there. <laughs> Yeah, yep. Yeah. You're all okay with those members' reports? No, yeah, 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 all good. All good. Um, so, now we're going to go with Martin Gerber and see if those members' reports. Is that a problem? Yeah, all in favour? Aye. All good. And can those members' reports be tabled somehow? Yes, the they will be in the next. Uh, where are we? Public excluders. Yep. So if we can just get a mover and second, and then I can tell Anna Hido, who's working out there, to stop the recording. So, all right. Uh, so a mover and second to go into public excluders. Oh, my. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Robert. Is that right? I've got that. 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 I've